Keith going through and Keith is as tough as Nicholas Cage's face. Noble starts to step to the corner. Noble is in. He's as dangerous and fast as a troll on social media. What a score! Ryan Reese is more elusive than Homer Simpson's dietitian. Hello and Happy New Year to you all. We're delighted to kick off Season 5 of Major League Rugby, which begins soon on February 5th. This video is brought to you by the Rugby Network, which is the home of all things rugby in North America, as we provide a brief overview of what players will join the 13 teams ahead of the 2022 season. I'm Dallin Stanford, former US 7th International, current World Rugby and Major League Rugby commentator. And with me for this segment is media mogul Alexander Deagle, who moonlights as a skillful winger inside a Ford's body. Ha. Thank you, Dallin. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, my teammates appreciate the uh, the footwork, but obviously in classic Ford's fashion, I have not gotten a haircut in several months, as you know, all our viewers can see. It's very Wolverine-like. I mean, it suits you as a, as a Ford. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Happy to come uh, join you with the Rugby Network as obviously a writer and club man with Old Gaelic Rugby. So as you said, excited to get uh, season five rolling. So let's, let's head it off. Awesome. Okay, let's go into a brief little summary. MLR had two brilliant franchise victories by the champions, the Seattle Seawolves, back-to-back in 2018 and 2019. We took a pause in 2020, of course, as the world kind of struggled with all that was COVID. But last year, we played 99 matches, crowning a new champion in their first ever season, the Los Angeles Giltinis producing a golden run to be victorious in season four. So in this video, we're going to fire out what we know so far about each side. Of course, there's plenty will be revealed by each team later this month. And more will be known, of course, with overseas players. Are they able to get into the United States? Will their visas be processed in time? So it's going to be pretty tight, as tight as a boxer's glove, as some say. We also we have an exclusive interview with one of the greatest World 7 Series players of all time, the American Bulldozer. Danny Barrett, he'll be leaving the USA Sevens program. He'll join the Houston Sabercats to resurrect the side's chances in Major League Rugby. It can be done. Just ask Neo and the Matrix. But first, let's kick it off with updates of the 2022 season. The Western Conference, which will have seven teams this year compared to six in the East. Let's start with a franchise that will be taking the field for the first time, the Dallas Jackals. All eyes are going to be on the Dallas Jackals. Uh, they're that new team. And as we've seen from the past, those new teams can make a run at the Cup, as LA did last year. Uh, New York went right into the semifinals, um, so we're excited to see Dallas. And they've already unleashed some big signings. Chad London, who I, we have not seen in the MLR for a couple of years. Adrian Carlsey, who was a massive part of that uh, dominant ATL team last part last year. And then some very athletic uh, wings coming out of the college ranks. Eric Naposky from UCLA, Aaron Gray. And a shout out to my old capital, now old Glory Selects teammate Campbell Johnston, who's going to be making a run in the back line as well. And we're obviously beginning to see parts of an identity there with an explosive athletic backline, and we'll see what happens with the rest of the roster as it's unleashed before the start of the season. Yeah, really exciting to see them finally join. It's been they've been waiting for so long. Now we've got three teams in Texas. You mentioned Chad London; he's great, and Collar Denison at Scrum Off's fantastic. Adrian Colser, I think it's a big, big game for them. Um, he could be outstanding for them in the midfield. All right, let's take a look at the defending champions next. Los Angeles; they did a fantastic job of. Raising the profile internationally with blockbuster names like Adam Ashley Cooper, Matt Guido, plus their creative attacking style. They were so fun to watch. Their home field, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, is just an epic venue for rugby. New head coach Stephen Hoyles, who was an assistant last year. Their player signings are long list here. We've got Justice Sirius Duru, the ageless prop from Seattle. Sea Wolves, he'll be the Canadian international, bring upfront experience. Another Canadian international, Ben Lesage, on a two year deal from the Toronto Arrows. He had an excellent season in the midfield. And with that extra space that LA attack with, he could be lethal for them. We then have dual code star Will Chambers, probably one of the biggest faces for their side. He's been brilliant in the Oz NRL, played for Australia, Melbourne Storm, Queensland, and then recently he played with his son, Tori Sangolath. So he's kind of that anchor that they're looking for to replace Adam Ashley Cooper in the midfield. And then one of the most electric American players of all time, DeMonte Noble, heads to Hollywood. The man from Old Glory, D.C., such an exciting player in the back line. He rounds people like Park Cars. He will certainly be one to watch for this coming season. Up front, a couple of prop signings, heading to LA's former Australia Under-20 product, uh, Leslie Leilua Ali'i Markin for three years. Bit of a tongue twister there, and he'll be turning players upside down as well. 
plus speedster Brooklyn Hardiker, also from Australia. He was in the Aussie 7 squad for a while. And then USA under-20 halfbacks, uh, Jeffrey Pelasuma and Taz Smith, who was born in New York, grew up in Australia. So Stephen Hall has done a great job recruiting his players. They have firepower ready, adding these new names to the squad as they look to evolve and change and, and mix things up again for this season. They'll be fun to watch again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously some big names to replace there, but it's a little bit of uh, the rich get richer there with uh, Big Justice coming down from Seattle, Canadian inter- International, as you mentioned, same as Ben Lesage, who was a uh, captain over with Toronto, uh, now switching coasts and, and countries. Uh, and then, of course, all eyes will be on DeMonte Noble. I mean, nothing highlights, nothing lights up LA like a speedy winger like that, right? Totally. So now we are bumping right down into uh, West Coast rival, the San Diego Legion. Big news, uh, Ma'ananu is back so he was lighting up the league in 2020 before things got shut down so we'll see there's obviously plenty of mileage in that uh, veteran body there will Hooley from the usa side is going to be man in the uh, possibly the 10 the 15 position we'll see as things shake out tian lutz is back uh, in the midfield there in the center position and could almost call this a new new acquisition chris robshaw who had an injury plague debut last year Double shoulder injuries. Uh, it was obviously super gutting to watch back at home uh, as he was doing his thing, rocking the rocks in that uh, L.A. game and then went down for what ended up being the season injuring the second shoulder shoulder injury that ended his season. So they are and we are as fans looking forward to getting much more out of him this in year two. Yeah, Nanu, so excited to watch. He's more dangerous than climate change. He's going to be one of the reasons the Legion go well this this year. Uh, and then you mentioned Rob Shaw. I know he's your favorite player. How many times do you dream of Rob Shaw night? Well, you know, I, you know, I kind of turn around to my Legion of Seven jerseys back there uh, before every game, and I, I say a little prayer to the, the flanker gods, and I just hope that I can channel my inner Rob Shaw to just attack a Rucks every Saturday. Well, good. Let's hope he stays on the field. Uh, time to flick across to the Utah Warriors. They were such a thrilling team to watch, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat on several occasions. I'm not sure how their fans survived those heart attacks or coach Sean Pittman, but they've kept a core of their side, which is really good. About 22 players returning. It'll give them momentum to build on. Coming back is Logan Targo, fresh from the USA tour of the Sevens World Series. He's a, one of those electric players that can change a game with X Factor. They've got two new scrum offs coming in, one from Harlequins, Niall Saunders. He represented Ireland under 20. The other is former Fijian under 18 player, Johnny Vatuwalewalu. Uh, they also bring in Mikko Gare Flyhoff, a player who's played with the Ireland representative side. Caleb McKenney is New Zealand under 20 fullback, together with Connor Burns, also from, from England. So quite a few new names in the mix there as well. And then in the forwards pack, two big locks from down under. Kiwi Jamie Lane, uh, who's from Auckland, played with New Zealand under 20 side and Australian Regan Leslie. So they add experience to their coaching staff as well. They bring in a forwards expert from Australia, Robbie Abel, who played Super Rugby and ITM Cup. So to me, they're locked and loaded. The Warriors are ready for season number five. Yeah, another one of the top teams. And again, just adding more explosive players to what was a dynamic back line. I mean, if you just need more weapons to go around uh, Mikey Teo, they have them. And I'm excited, uh, you know, speaking of Wolverine, big Logan there, uh, to see uh, if he can take the next step forward after getting that experience on the World Se- World Series of Sevens and uh, just getting a little bit more of that international experience and now having a big new season in ML- MLR. So we will go right down to the Austin Gilgronis, the AGs, uh, another team that is looking to add more firepower to a team that was one of the best defensive squads last year. So they have taken Julian Dominguez, Mark O'Keefe, and Marcel Baraki from the USA squad. O'Keefe and Dominguez, two of the top backs from last year. Uh, O'Keefe obviously made the play of the year. Honestly, probably impacted the championship uh, with O'Keefe making that rap and dive back tackle so i mean t- huge pick up there i'm excited to see those guys suit up for the ags yeah the austin side they were very very impressive and i think the change in ownership as well has done wonders for that program that franchise bringing fans out now they did a brilliant documentary behind the scenes also so they're really looking to go above and beyond i think this season really could be a big season for them excited to see what they got in store for us and then speaking of big season seattle so after winning two mlr titles they had two disappointing seasons back to back but they showed a lot of spark last year there's new faces that came into the fold this past season uh, the head coach alan clark has been working behind the scenes to to get that franchise back up up and running. A real feature has been their home support. And then, of course, their 100 club that travel away to support their team, Starfire Stadium, are just a great community as well to watch rugby there. So, signings for them South African prop Samo Manjola from the Natal Sharks out of South Africa through 2022. So, he's played in the Super Rugby Curry Cup competition and Pro 14 as well. So, great experience that he brings to the side. 
a Tasman prop from New Zealand, Sam Matenga, also through 2022. So longer term signings, which is really good for the league as well. And then they bring in center Dan Krill, uh, played super rugby out of South Africa as well. So there'll be more names become apparent as the season kind of gets closer to kickoff. But a couple of big names that are staying behind. I know you love this player, Simon Manoa, the block monster. He is <laughs> just so scary on the field. He obviously can mix between lock and, and number eight. He's going to stick around for one more year. He wants to end his career on a high, of course, and so does Tim Metcher. Uh, so those are two big names that want to finish with playoff runs this season, see how they go. I think the Seawolves will be back to hunt for season five. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned a couple of those uh, veteran forwards. Uh, you know, it's the, uh, the older we get, the lower our numbers go. And then mixing in with a bunch of young talent as they kind of debuted Toward the end of last season, they said, you know, 2021's not our year and brought in, like I said, a bunch of young talent. So now we're going to see that mesh, a hungry, proud franchise and see what they can do to kind of rebound from a disappointing uh, 2021. Now we pop right into Houston before we uh, send it over to our friend Danny Barrett. Obviously, he's headlining a class for a team that is really winning the offseason. Uh, so obviously we have Danny Barrett, his sevens teammate, Mate Leuta. Kenny Nessagege from uh, from San Diego, as well as his uh, fellow forward from San Diego, CC Mahoney, a couple of big units there. Christian Dyer, uh, up and coming USA explosive back. So we'll see what all of those guys can do, uh, as well as a full season of Nate Boyer, who made a huge impact and a new fly up and David Kutzer from uh, South African Super Rugby. And, you know, is this a changing culture? I think the offseason says yes. You know, it's always been that team that kind of was always dangerous, you know, identified by Sam Windsor, Zach Pangelinen. Uh, Windsor's out, Zach is back. So with all those new additions, I mean, sky's the limit for that squad. Yeah, I think what's really great too, new director of rugby, Hani Kamea from South Africa, he knows all about winning. He comes from the legendary Blue Bulls rugby side in South Africa that won several super rugby titles, uh, beating all the New Zealand teams and Australian teams as well. Plus, he's been in charge of the Springboks a while. So you'll see a South African fl- flavor to the side as well. It is Texas, so there are a lot of South Africans there anyway, but I see some names on the roster here with younger experience, the under 18, under 20 side. You've got Lauritz van der Skaif, uh, Kian Meaden, Gideon van Beek, Willie Britz, and Jakub Sednot. So strong players come through that I'm sure he's added to the mix. And then you said he's done a great job getting in the sevens talent of players coming through uh, to join them as well. So I think this really could be an exciting here for Houston and there will be no easy matches, that's for sure. All right, just let's chat to the great Danny Barrett before he gives me a haircut. Biggest news in Major League Rugby, Danny Barrett set to join season 2022, season five, Biggest hit since the Beatles, DB, 92 tries, sixth highest in US 7's history, a wrecking ball, not like Miley Cyrus, but has run people over at 50 events and more, numerous cup championships, numerous victories, second on the series in 2019, the best ever performance by a US side. This is Danny Barrett, boom, boom, straight out of the basement, Danny, how are you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm good. You know, I thought it was 98, but I guess my count must be off by a little bit, so... Might have to come back for a few tournaments. Well, well, exactly. Numbers is not my game, my friend. I just do all the talking. Danny, you've been a delight to watch over the years. You've graced the sevens pitch and done America so proud. Let's start with the with the first news. You are set to be a father, the birth of your first child. How are things going and, and how are you feeling about that, pal? No, it's great. Uh, you know, my wife, Megan, and I are super excited. We're having a little girl in January. Uh, fun fact about the Barrett family, we haven't had a girl born in the family since... Uh, 1985 and that's including cousins kids and my brother's kids so no we're, we're super excited looking forward to it we're about to be the most yeah. popular people in the family no doubt <laughs> if not already i hope thank you yeah <laughs> congratulations my friend uh, how, how's your diaper changing form have you have you worked on it yet i think i've changed one diaper but i figure you know figure out as we go trial by error here yeah you'd actually be one of one above me before i had my my daughter so um that's you're actually well well more experienced than i am no yeah. we got a special guest appearance steve thomasine just walked in oh no so. ways oh get him on get him on the show <laughs> yeah. steve yeah. they want you <laughs> get him on the show get him on with houston do it all yeah. we'll see what we can do steve say hi yeah. hello everybody What's up, steve how are you oh hello down hello yeah, pal down, how are you Alan's... doing you just you sneaking yeah, in for a quiet little yeah, quiet little game what's going on just coming in from training off the of pitch, a couple yeah. fitness tests today. So yeah, a little Bronco, a little bit of conditioning, you know, nothing like a good Monday back. Love yeah. it. Special guest. Well, we're on a real treat here. I love it. Well, we'll let you get guys. back to it. Good seeing you. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. Who else is coming through those doors? Is Falau back there somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna pop out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Love a little cameo on the show. Um, <laughs> 
So yeah, but uh, yeah, as I was saying, congrats on signing and welcome to the MLR. So just kind of curious, what attracted you specifically to Houston? Yeah, you know, I think Houston has been kind of on the, the downside of the league, right, over the past few years. I think it's a it's an awesome challenge to be able to be part of something new, be part of uh, a team and a, a community of, of rugby individuals and, and groups that, you know, are dying to have a successful program. And, you know, the, the sporting landscape within the city of Houston in the state of Texas uh, is incredible. And there's no reason why the Sabercats shouldn't be at the top of that as well. So, you know, the challenge of taking a team from the bottom and bringing them to the top is, is what really, you know, brought me in, you know, having Heineke as the GM, Pote as the head coach. You know, I played against Heineke's uh, 2015 World Cup side. Knowing him through the opposition is, it, you know, it's, it's a really cool thing to be able to play for a guy of that caliber. You know, every, everybody wants to do that growing up and be the best, play the best. And for me as a, as a person to, to learn and grow as a rugby player, Hopefully you're able to help steer them in the right direction. You know, you played, you have switched across from sevens to fifteens before, obviously, but you have been with the program for seven years or so. So tell us a bit about switching. You know, a lot of people ask, can you, is it, is it easy to do once you play at a high level rugby? What are your thoughts on switching back to fifteens? I, I think so. The, the transition from sevens to fifteens, I think is a bit easier. Fifteens uh, back to sevens. I mean, the sevens game is so demanding cardiovascularly and it's just a completely different, you're a, a little dingy in the open water, right? So I think going from sevens to fifteens will be, it won't be an easy transition by any means, but I think it'll be easier than the two, you know, playing high level rugby and kind of understanding the the demands that what it takes to be successful is kind of something that will carry me along and knowing what I have to put my body through and, and my mind and all of that. I think that's probably the, the biggest transition. I'm used to playing 14 minutes here. I got to go play 80 now. So yeah, there's going to be a bit of a transition. I'm used to being the bigger guy, and now I'm probably going to be, you know, not the biggest guy on the field. So yeah, it, it, it'll be fun though. Oh, it'll definitely be fun. I mean, and you have an exciting squad with a lot of new faces coming in. Talk a bit about, you know, 15s World Cup is is World Cup 2023 allure or something down the line that you're potentially thinking about once you've switched across and played a full season of MLR. Yeah, I mean, you know, just trying to be the best rugby player I can, and you know, if that. Gary Gold and the USA come knocking at my door, then, you know, that's a conversation to have at that time. As of right now, I'm just excited to, to get back into it. You know, I've been out of it for what will be about five and a half years before I play my first game. I haven't played any 15s in, in over five years. So, you know, just getting back into it, getting into the swing of things. If they come knock on my door, I'll, I'll, I'll take the call and, you know, see what, see what we can come up, can come up with. All right. Excellent. So yeah, your new squad, Houston, has been one of the busiest teams in the offseason. You'd say they're winning the offseason, if you will. Signing yourself, uh, your sevens teammate, uh, Matt Tyluta, some veteran MLR standouts from across the league, as well as Christian Dyer, who's now an up-and-comer on the USA team. So are you kind of seeing, and we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, kind of a, a shift in Houston's culture and you know, hope that they're ready to win some more games and compete for a shield? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the work that they've put in kind of in the front office is, has shown just that. I mean, exactly what you're saying is, you know, signing some big name guys, bringing in a lot of veteran uh, overseas experience as well. Uh, Zach Pangelina has been with Houston since the beginning. So you still have that kind of homegrown ish talent to be able to, you know, welcome the rest of us in with open arms and show us kind of what the city's about. You know, what's the, the rugby community really like? It's just going to be a really super exciting group. You know, I, I can't wait to get down there and, and just get amongst the boys, get amongst the culture, amongst like in the town and the fabrics of the of the city. Yeah, it's it's just super exciting that they have so many different people from so many different parts of the world that are all going to come together and just try and dominate this league. Absolutely. And so uh, you, I can see your excitement. What specifically do you think is most exciting about this upcoming season? Whether it's joining the MLR, getting back into the back row, playing fifteens. Yeah, I think the most exciting thing is you know we we are that wounded dog. You know, we, we haven't been that good and pretty much at all since the inception of the MLR. So I want people to, to underestimate us and we're, we'll go in. We have the Giltinis up first week one. You know, they're coming off of the back of a championship season in, in their first year. So who better to go at than the defending champs against, you know, the bottom of the table? 
bring it on. That, that's exactly what we're looking for. Give us the challenge straight up and see if we can handle it. And you'll be, you'll be damn sure to, to see that we're going to be able to handle it. Well, I can see you're uh, ready to throw the boots on now, and you've got a lot of time to, uh, <laughs> to build up to it. So watch out, MLR. So, you know, I did pencil you when you do put, put those boots on in the back row. Will you be staying in the fours now that you have all that time in, it with sevens? Or are you going to be lobbying to get that number 10 jersey on? <laughs> number 10, maybe not. Uh, you know, I, I've had a few conversations with, with the coaching staff and said, hey, man, you know, I'll, I will do whatever you need me to do. You want me to play in the forwards? You want me to play in the front row? You want me to play in the back somewhere? You know, I'll do it. W whatever, whatever you need from me, I'll do it. You want me to kick goal? I'm not very good at it, but I do have a 100% conversion record on the series, so I'll take it. <laughs> Is that one for one? Nope. I have multiple <laughs> conversions, 100%. All right. I'll let nice. you guys look at the stats. Uh, you know what? The World 7 Series site is, is, is offline. That's what's going on. But Danny, listen, I, I love your enthusiasm and I love how you are ready to be the underdog and cause those upsets. And it's a similar thing with the PR7s as well when people said the name's a little bit silly and you're like, give me any name. I want to be the team and I, I want to lead the side and, 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 and cause disruption, which we love so much. So we have a bunch of sevens questions for you, putting you in the hot seat. You've played for many, many years. Favorite moment playing sevens for the USA? Ooh, um, it, you know, the two that stand out are the two cup victories. The first two, you know, we played uh, London 2015 uh, off the back of a season that, you know, the season before, there was a pretty good chance we were going to be relegated to then come out, win London, and then follow that up with a berth in the Olympics. You know, I think we went into that season, you know, whoever the, the higher ups are, gave us about a 10 or 20% chance of qualifying. And, you know, we, we couldn't have peaked at a better time. And then I think for me, best moment for me personally, uh, there's probably two of them. One running out of the World Cup, San Francisco, uh, you know, being in kind of my home area. We trained at my club. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, the other one is off the back of my first, off the back of my debut tournament, I gave a jersey to uh, one of one to each brother. They were the ones that got me into the sport, so they're the ones that deserve to, to be able to have that jersey as well. So I think those are probably uh, some of the top, top moments for me. Very, very special moments. I love it. Where those moments might have taken place, where is, would be your favorite stadium or city to play Sevens in? So that one's easy. So I'll give you Hong Kong because Hong Kong's just simply amazing. But I think the other one's Cape Town. You know, whenever you go to another country and you're playing international rugby, the people in that country, you go to New Zealand, they love rugby. No, what they love is New Zealand rugby but for the most. When you go to Cape Town, very much do they love South African rugby, but they also just want to talk to you. Uh, they're, they're enthralled with being able to talk to an international rugby player. And, you know, they want to sit down and talk about the game and what's it like, what's it like on the field. You know, they're, they're bleeding green and gold, but at the end of the day, they're just thrilled to be able to have that opportunity to talk to someone who's playing at that level and, and share a moment. And I think that's just incredible. Besides that, the uh, beauty of the city is also top notch. Yes, I was going to say that's that's where I grew up and where I'm from. And it's just special to have Cape Town Sevens on the map. Uh, Danny, back in the I, day, we I played... take that back then. Yeah, so, uh, not Cape Town anymore. If that's where you're from, not Cape Town anymore. <laughs> we used not to play Danny. Friend. Danny, how random is this? When we when the SA Sevens was on, it wasn't George. Now George is a small little town in the middle of nowhere, and and yes, it's got a nice little community. But it's like whenever people came to South Africa, and I said, "Why do we end up in George? Cape Town is so beautiful." They finally moved it across when it got more popular, and now it sells out within seconds. And so uh, it's oh, so yeah. great to, to hear that, pal. Now let's talk about opposition, playing them. Who would be amongst your favorite opposition to play and go head-to-head -head against as a country? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, Canada is always a pretty special one. You know, there's a, been a few times where neither of us have been, you know, at, at the top of the table, but those matches are always going to be intense. They're always going to be a good game. There's always going to be that little bit of X factor that's going to take you over the top, something that you want to do a little bit more of work a little bit harder just to win that game. And then the other one's South Africa. You know, those guys are a bunch of hard guys, hard workers, great players, but off the field, they're just incredible people. Very nice. You know, you can be in fisticuffs on the field, but once you cross the four lines it's hey, you know, that, that was a heck of a game. Like, you know, nothing in it. We've had a, a number of, of good matches with them. You know, I think we played them four or five semifinals in a row one season 
or quarterfinal knockout games in a row. And, you know, they were, I think the, they came out better than we did, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, it was within a try three, four points every game. So, you know, playing against them, they're kind of the gold standard pretty much year in and year out. So yeah, great rivalry out of the, the team stage and looking more as those individual players, if you had to choose seven players to kind of make up a sevens dream team, who would you pick seven of your opponents? Seven opponents. Oh man. I can't pick anyone from the U S no. Right. No. Okay. No, can't. Uh, probably goes, uh, I'm going to go Sonatla on the wing in the center. I'll go. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ten, ten, 10 would probably be uh Kalinisau because I mean, his leadership is unmatched outside of our King Madison Hughes and the forwards. You know, DJ Forbes is up there. Frankie Horn's in there as well. And then, well, I can't put Rodwell in now because then we wouldn't have a hooker. But Rodwell is probably in there. Jerry Tuai, I'd put it probably at nine. And then back to the center would be, you know what? I, I might move Snotla to the center and put Norton on the wing. Wow, that's power. You can yeah. see those coaching shops coming in. Yeah. <laughs> And then, Danny, so you've, you've alluded to some of the great forwards there that you've played against. Is there one forward that you really relished going head-to-head against? Ooh, um, you know, I, I think Ed Jenkins and I had a pretty, pretty good little back and forth for, for a couple of years. Uh, Mark Robinson from Scotland. I think we played them like seven tournaments in a row. Uh, he was a, a heck of a player. Uh, Harry Jones. So Harry, Harry was a little bit of both. I've been playing against Harry since 2009. Uh, when we were, he was at UBC, I was at Cal, having that kind of longevity of uh, of opposition, and you know, seeing how far both of us have come, you know, pretty much at the same time is is that one's pretty good as well, I think. Shifting gears to a little bit more domestic sevens here and a little bit more recent history, what was it like playing in that inaugural PR sevens uh, weekend tournament? And what are your general thoughts on the new startup league? It was a fantastic week, you know, bringing so many guys and girls together. And the fact that it's not just a men's league, the fact that it's a, it's a professional women's league as well, you know, seeing the girls go out and, and play as well as they did. And then, you know, some of them get brought into camp and you know, that's exactly what we're looking at. And, you know, having coached with the, the women for the last two or three months, you know, seeing that kind of transition, especially on that side of the game is, is great. The tournament itself, there's still some bugs to work out, but that's going to happen with any business, any company, any team, at any level, you know, there's always going to be things that can be better and things that were really good. And I think, you know, they, they did a really good job of, of getting these teams together, getting a whole group of guys and girls, and then bringing us together as a group and not just teams individually, but as a tournament, you know, they're very welcoming with, you know, questions, comments, concerns, pretty much anything that, that you can think of. I mean, they were on top of it at the drop of a hat snacks, Sean Leonard Smith, Mike Tolkien, we're just great guys that have been around it for a long time and, and really know what's going on. So, yeah, no, I think I, I can't wait to see where they go and hopefully they're going to get four or five, six tournaments in the next year and just watch the league grow. It's definitely something I'm looking forward to seeing more of as well. It was exciting to, to cover back home. Speaking of where they go, would you possibly be part of that first full PR seven season? Yeah, we'll see, you know, um, we'll see how the, the 15s side of game treats my body over the next year. Uh, sure. But I, I mean, I, I could definitely see myself on the, uh, the outside looking in, you know, from the other side of the line on the coaching side. I, I really enjoyed, you know, helping the women down here and watching them progress and, you know, kind of took a little bit of that on throughout the PR sevens as well, just to try to help grow the game with everybody. Definitely see myself being involved in some capacity. It's, it's quite exciting to have, you know, professional 15s, then professional sevens coming to the U.S. finally. I just talk about the coaching side of things. So what's it like to work with Emily Bidewell and Zach Tess and, and coaching the women's side? Well, what, you said you've been there for a couple of months. Has it been a great experience? Yeah, it's been fantastic. You know, I, it's my second real coaching experience. I coached one of the local high schools in San Diego a couple of years ago. So to be kind of put under you know, this much pressure with coaching a national team kind of, you know, a couple of months after being a player. I think that has been, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's also super rewarding to see them go out and do exactly what I worked with them on. Um, especially in, uh, 
<laughs> their barkers at the door is the problem. You know, working with, with the girls, it's such a challenge from, from working with the boys and being a player on that side. You know, the way that uh, you can speak to each other, the way that, you know, the girls think about the game and the questions that they ask are, is a little bit different than the men's side of things. So being able to deal with that and, and try and tick my brain over and get every last little bit of detail out when usually I'm just going to say, hey, this is what it is, go do it. And people typically understand that where the girls want a bit more detail and, and, and that challenges me and I love that challenge. So no, it's been absolutely fantastic being back with, with Zach, who was my roommate on tour for a number of years. Uh, it's been great. You know, he's a, a great rugby mind and I wish he was still playing, but, you know, he's, he's doing great things, you know, behind the whistle. And then working with M as well, you know, she's been around the program for so long. When I first showed up, she was a player. Uh, so now to see her growth from player into management, now into head coach is, is fantastic. Awesome. But listen, Danny, I want to say uh, uh, it's been such a pleasure having you on. And uh, we want to wish you all the best with the Houston Sabercats and Major League Rugby. Can't wait to commentate your games there and to provide some colorful bio information. I love the stats about your family as well. So all the best there. There's really, really big, exciting moments coming up in your life. Yeah, thank you very much. No, we're, we're really looking forward to that challenge. It's going to be a little bit of a different one. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations in advance. Uh, enjoy the adventure. And thanks a lot for hopping on with us tonight. Yeah, of course. Thank you. But not yeah. to let the dogs out, Danny. Yeah, right. They're, they're going <laughs> to bite my head off if I don't. <laughs> uh, thank you, buddy. We'll keep in touch um, with you as the season gets on. And again, appreciate your insights and everything you've done on the sevens field. Bl bloody electric, my friend. Thank you very much. All right, time now for the Eastern Conference. Let's start with the MLR finalists, the champions in the East, Rugby ATL. New stadium for them, Silverbacks Park, uh, with the head coach, Scott Lawrence. I must mention some of the returning players because they were so brilliant last season. You had the forwards, Marco Janssen van Rensburg, Vickers Grunewald, Johan Momsen, Matt Heaton, Jason Dahm, plus the backs, Ron Khos, uh, Jeremy Masella Galu, the Miss on Ryan Nell, all familiar names that you know. They're all back. They're ready to rumble for this current season. New players they have signed, South African prop, John Roy Jenkins, just known as JR. He played with the Griquas in South Africa under 20. Fly for Joaquin de la Vega from the Hindu Club in Argentina, played Los Pumas under 20. They need to find a replacement for Baptista Escura, who's now in France playing with Grenoble. So I think that's the replacement there. A big loss. We mentioned earlier, Adrian Carlso was seriously one of my favorite backs of all time of the year in, in Major League Rugby. Um, so he's not with them no longer. But Scott Lawrence, he's a master tactician uh, and he will always have something special in Atlanta. He's built something great there. And again, they'll be strong yet again this year. Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head with Scott Lawrence. I mean, rattling off titles with life before going over to Rugby ATL. And now in their first full season, went right to the MLR Shield, right to the championship game. Uh, and uh, they also did get uh, a nice back rower from New York, you know, bringing him down south and Evan Minter and a big body there that can fill a few positions for them. So it should be, uh, you know, everything up in their second full season. And now we head right to one of their big rivals in the Eastern Conference, Old Glory, uh, the big news there is they did lose uh, one of the MLR's leading scorers in Jason Robertson. The man looking to fill those shoes will be Rohan Seafoli. Uh, I'm telling from my contacts with Old Glory, he's uh, you know, a bit of a bigger bodied fly half than Robertson, but similar in that aggressive, you know, certainly not what we'd call it a distributing 10. So it should be some seeing some similar highlights between him and the recently announced re-signed number nine, Danny Tusatala. Yeah, that's right. They're on the bubble. I called a lot of Old Glory DC's games. They were exciting to watch. Very fun team. They just couldn't put it together at the end in a lot of the games. And you felt bad for the players because they put so much on the line. Uh, this year, they really could turn things around, which would be exciting to see. New England Free Jacks, the next team there. Probably the busiest team in the recruitment department. Just looking at all the new names that I see on their roster. Uh, they will go back to Veterans Memorial Stadium. They played one game there to close out the season when they beat ATL. They'll be there at home the whole year. New coach from South Africa, Scott Matthew, uh, and a new assistant coach, Mike Rogers, from New Zealand. Those two countries come together. You'll see in the signings, uh, they bring a lot of players from New Zealand and South Africa. So Alex Johnson, New Zealand prop, Joe Johnson's brother, who's in the squad already. A young prop, Tavita Sole, played Ponga under 20. Foster DeWitt, capped Canadian hooker. Mills Sunny Rivi from New Zealand as well, from Taranaki. South African Herman Achenbach, uh, played uh, with the under-18 South African side as well. Stan van der Hoven, known as the Dutch giant from the Netherlands. Can't wait to see this guy play. Six foot eight, 250 pounds, played with Bale Plenty and was in the Chiefs squad as well. So he'll be a big friend coming through as well. 
Then a local player from New England, uh, Cam Davidowitz. Really excited to see him come to life. Plus three other key New Zealand loose forwards, Slade McDowell, Jesse Peretti, and Terrell Pieta, who come in as well in the forward. So a lot of new names there. The backs, they've signed Scrum Halfs, Holden Younger, the vampire from Nola Gold, another one of my favorite players, not just for his nickname. And then they've signed five centers. Now, again, some of these centers can mix in at fly half or can, can push out to fullback as well. But it's an interesting choice there. They realize that could be an area of concern for them. Michael Lomano from the USA, LaRue Malan, the Namibian, um, who actually played at my alma mater, University of Cape Town, Ike Tigers. You've got the man from Colorado, uh, Zach Bastres, Jack Reeves from Gloucester in England, and Wayne van der Bank from South Africa as well, play with the Pumas. So lots of new names to their faces there. Uh, this could be another fantastic year for the Free Jacks. I know they're going to saddle up and they're going to be ready to ride. As we know, it's airtight in the Eastern Conference. New England was right there in the mix all the way until the last week of the season. And we'll see if any of these signings can, uh, can push them over the edge. One guy I'm always looking forward to seeing, always ready to mix it up, Holden Younger, pairing him with John Pollan, who's also ready to mix it up. I uh, don't envy any of the coaches whenever they go 15 on 15 live. Uh. <laughs> so now we'll go right to their uh, local rival there in Rugby United, New York. You know, I'll be honest, up until like a couple days before recording, I was a little bit worried about who we're going to be shouting out as, as new signings. They were bringing, uh, you know, new uh, re-signing after re-signing. Ben Bonasso, Andy Ellis is back, Dylan Fawcett, the butcher. But just in time to save us, Sam Windsor is now in town, as well as Chance Wangluski, two of the top players from last year. Excellent veterans that can help New York maybe perhaps get out of that semifinal bracket and into the finals and make that final step for the Shield. Yeah, I feel for Sam, Sam Windsor. You know, he was playing behind a pack that was struggling with Houston. Now he'll be behind a strong pack. New York are excellent with their, their tight forwards. Uh, so that's going to be really good for him and guarding that, that New York side. Uh, they, they really have plenty of talents. It'll be, as you said, it's, the Eastern Conference is so, so, so tough. And another team that's going to challenge Nola Gold. I feel like they're a side... They've been a consistent threat each season they've played. They just haven't been able to get through to the end. But I think 2022 could be, a, you know, an exciting one for them. Where they've got a couple of trades. Uh, they've got Aaron Matthews, the St. Mary Gales and under-20 USA product. Devereaux Ferris, capped US Eagle, all from Seattle Seawolves. Chase Shaw Haskin comes in from the MLR Collegiate Draft. Big frame. I see him a lot in the sevens as well. They've signed Harley Wheeler. He last played with Rugby ATL, took a year off to pursue sevens for the US Eagles. So he could be really good. If he's fit, he's an exciting player. Taylor Cramry, two-time MLR champion with Seattle, comes in. Matthew Caroy out of life and USA under 20 as well. So a, a couple of new names coming in here. But big news and good news as well is the return of JP Eloff. He was injured last year. He's their playmaker. They fly off huge boot as well. If they go well and he, they will need him to be strong as well, he's certainly one of the key players that get them into the, that playoff run. Yeah, super exciting to get JP back. He's one of those favorite players on the American rugby scene. This team's also been super active in the trade market, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, you know, last year they brought over Duplessis. This year it's Aaron Matthews. So let's see if Matthews can, uh, similar to Duplessis, help bolster that back line and uh, help form over the edge and into the playoffs. They've always kind of been, you know, the bridesmaid, not quite the bride, but they certainly have the talent to get in there. And now we're on to Toronto. So we're out of the U.S. And uh, once again, ton of returning Canadian talent. We all love us some uh, rough and tumble Lucas Rumble there. Brought in a couple Australians to help uh, help get them over the edge and get to that 2020 form when they were leading the season before the shutdown. Uh, Matt Hood, an Australian with plenty of pace, you know, a 5'7", 5'8", jitterbug. He's, uh, you know, many caps on the seven scene. And big prop Sione Fa'alele uh, is also going to bolster that front row. Like I said, another Aussie there to go with all of his Canadians. Yeah, so the Arrows, you know, they really had a tough run, of course. They had to, you know, due to, due to quarantine and COVID and everything else, they had to play away from home. So it'd be really nice that they can be in front of their home fans. I uh, also like a couple of other extra players. They've added a bit of another winger as well, Denon Robinson Bartlett, a New Zealand Maori on a 20 player. And then a, a big Kiwi center, Uita Tafunga, plus Flaf Andrew Norton, who's been capped from Spain. So a couple of new names in their mix as well. Of course, a bunch of Canadian legends in their squad. Uh, so it'd be really good to see how they go. I mean, uh, Rugby Canada needs a strong side, so they certainly need, need to deliver this year. Well, there we have it. Uh, an excellent rundown. I Well, I believe it was an excellent rundown. We'll let the viewers at home, home decide that. But, uh, you know, excited to get this going and going into uh, MLR season number five, 2022 coming at us. Major League Rugby Season 5, as you said, coming up very soon. This was the preview for the player movements amongst the 13 teams for an electric five months of rugby starting February 5th, 2022. Keep updated at majorleague.rugby and the rugbynetwork.com. From Alex Deagle and myself, Dallas Stanford, we'll see you soon, you sleek sensation. The Tiger King is loose! The big cat gets in! Carol Baskin, eat your heart out! I'm more 
worse than a long-tailed cat in a room full with rocking chairs. Langi Langi Hapiaku, he's built like a Russian vending machine.